Hey, what's going on everyone? So what I mentioned in the last video is we're going to make that calculator, but before we can do that, we have to actually build, or we want to learn more about the UI stack view. Um, so we're going to build a separate project related to that. Just really simple, just so that we really understand what, like how we can use that correctly before we do that, or before we dive into that, uh, I like to do all of the setup stuff first. So, uh, we talked about using Git. Actually, I want to use that in this course. I'm going to use that in all of my courses. Um, so I'm going to create a new, I'm going to create a new project. So uh, open up Xcode. I'm going to create a brand new project. Uh, so we'll just do a single, like a single view app. That's all we need for this. Uh, let's see. I'm going to just call it a, uh, just call it stack view. That's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, you can set your, if you have a developer account, you can set your team to anything, your, whatever your organization name is and your organization identifier. If you're starting out, you don't really have to care. Um, but this does have to do with how, how Apple keeps track of like the keeps track of your app in the app store. And so you can kind of see you get this unique identifier, your bundle identifier. That is the reverse of your organization name uh, or like, yeah, like the organization identifier. Okay, so next we can decide where we want to save it. Yeah, I'll just save it. Uh, you can save it anywhere. Actually, I don't like to save stuff on the desktop. Uh, so I kind of, I kind of put everything away. I, I, uh, I'm actually going to show you. I put everything in like a source folder somewhere because it's all source code. So I have a couple of layers deep. So within my source folder, I have a folder called Kojo because that's what all of our projects, like that's our company name. So uh, that's all of our projects. Um, there's a whole bunch of them already right here. So I'm gonna create this new one uh, and then I'll show you, like I said, I'll show you exactly where I put that. Okay, so that project has started. Uh, we have uh, all the normal project stuff. So from the command, from the command line, I guess you can do it anywhere you want. Um, I'm going to show you just, again, you could have saved your project wherever you want, but I'm going to show you where I saved mine. So uh, in the command line, I'm in my home directory, that little tilde. So I always, I have a, a folder called SRC, just that's sitting in my home directory. So that's my source folder. Um, you can start putting your projects in there. Since I have a couple of different uh, the categories of projects, uh, I like further subdivide those. So I also have something called Kojo. Um, and that's, again, that's just where all of my Kojo projects live. You can see here, the stack view project that we just created actually lives right in there. So I'm going to jump into that stack view project. Uh, it is, if we open it up again, this is, this is the nice thing about working on the Mac terminal is that the terminal integrates with uh, OSX really well. So I'm gonna open up the current folder and you'll see I have the stack view, which is gonna be all that code. And then I have that Xcode project there. Um, right now, this is not a Git repository, but I want it to be. So uh, remember we can do Git init, right? Initialize that empty Git repository. If you've, if you've decided to display, if you've turned on displaying hidden files and folders, you'll actually see that exists in there. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that git ignore file. I'm just gonna create it right away. So we can use the touch command, touch dot git ignore. Okay, creates that file. It's also, it's also hidden. Um, if you, <laughs> I guess if you haven't turned on hidden files, it becomes difficult to open. So one thing that you can do, if you're on the command line, you can open that up in nano, which is a command line tool. Uh, so it's just a command line editor, nano.gitignore. We'll open that up. Then you can edit it from there. It's not really great. I don't really like to edit it in there. So I'm not going to, but if you haven't turned on, uh, like if you haven't turned on the ability to, to show and 
and see these uh, hidden files and folders, then you might have to do it that way. Otherwise, if you can see that, uh, I'm just going to open that up with, well, I guess I'll use Adam. Adam is just another text editor that I, that I use sometimes. Okay, so there's that git ignore file. Now, in order to populate that, I'm going to go to git ignore.io. So you can just search it up even just like git ignore.io. It's going to take you to this site that helps you generate really nice uh, git ignore files. And so these are files that uh, other developers have decided like don't need to go don't need to be saved in your repository so sometimes you don't know what should or shouldn't be saved so going to this site is going to help you generate those files so i'll do things like osx so, uh, so like whatever platforms you're working on or like if you're working in xcode right or like if you're using well we know we're using swift so i just want to I, in general i just want to ignore any files associated with Swift or Xcode or OSX. Uh, so again, other developers ha have have worked on these different projects, and they, you know, they they're gonna know which files don't need to be saved in your Git repository. And so that's kind of what this is for. Um, I know I typically use Visual Studio Code to do some editing, so I'll put that in there. Uh, let's see, that's probably good for right now. Yeah, I mean, we really don't have that much. Sometimes I'll put in a, a whole bunch. It just depends, like what else, what else I'm using. You can you can kind of look through. Again, you don't have to understand what any of this stuff is, but if you're working on a Ruby project, or if you're working on a uh, Vue.js project or Angular, these are all just different, either different languages or different frameworks that you can use. We don't have to care because we're just working on uh, like. Mac, Mac, oh, well, there we go, Mac OS X. Oh, uh, so like, again, we don't have to care about all of that stuff. We just want to generate a nice file for things that we should ignore in our uh, iOS projects. So I'm going to create that. And then I'm just going to copy all of this. And I'm going to paste that into my git ignore file. Okay. So again, there's, there's like a lot of stuff in there. Uh, so the, the Mac OS one is really nice because like there's some just operating system level files that gets, uh, that get generated in folders all the time and that get updated all the time as you change files in your folders. So we just don't care about any of that stuff. So make sure that's saved. Okay, and then I need to create a new repository so I'm also already up here in GitHub. Uh, we don't need to be in the calculator one. So I'm gonna create a new repository. Call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Stack View Course for me. Uh, you can call it that if you want. Uh, I'm gonna make it public so that you guys can see it. Uh, let's see. We are, we are gonna import an existing repository so we don't care about that. So create repository. And so depending on how you are using GitHub, most likely if you are, if you're kind of brand new to a lot of programming, you're going to be using HTTPS. So uh, you don't have to worry about this. It's just this is password based. You can kind of think about it as this is password based, but it's secure. This is kind of like your computer's fingerprint based. Uh, so most likely you're going to be using HTTPS. If you don't know what SSH is, then don't worry about it. Use HTTPS. You'll have to enter in your password. I am going to use SSH because I already have that set up on my computer. Um, and so again, we, we already have, because we used git init, we're not going to create a new repository on the command line. We literally just did that. So now we already have a repository. So we're going to, use this. You can type all this in or you can just copy it. Okay. So 
So I'm going to add that remote so that my computer knows to point to GitHub. Okay. And then I need to push that, but I haven't actually committed anything yet. So I'm actually going to, if we, if we can see based on my screen, again, yours is going to look different unless you have, unless you have your shell configured like I do, like your terminal configured like I do. Otherwise, don't worry about it. But uh, I can see color coded that uh, I have files that haven't been saved yet. That's what that orange means. So we can, if you're not sure, you can check your Git status and you can see I have a whole bunch of untracked files. So I'm gonna do Git add and I'm gonna do like the wild card for this whole directory. So I'm gonna get add everything in this directory. And then I'm gonna commit with my message started, let's call it just stack view project. Okay. And then I'm going to get push. Since this is the first time I'm pushing up to my remote, do dash U to say go upstream. And I'm going to push to origin and branch master. Okay. And then there we go. So we can confirm that on GitHub. All right. So there we go. I just pushed 29 seconds ago. We have our code. We have our git ignore. Again, that git ignore is important because we don't get like operating system files that don't need to be in the repository. We don't get like IDE, which is like Xcode. We don't get Xcode extra generated files. They kind of get changed all the time. They don't need to be up in the repository. So uh, I like using that git ignore.io website because it, it gets it gets generated for me. I don't have to remember, you don't have, maybe you've never heard of CocoaPods, for example, or Carthage. Maybe you don't know what those are and it's not important. You use this tool and it's going to generate for, if you're working on an iOS project, it's going to generate all the things that you don't have to care about. If you're working on other projects, like I said, Angular or whatever, it's going to generate things for those files or for those projects that you don't want in your repository. So I like that site. You should use it too. Um, let's see. Okay, so our project should be good to go now. We can actually, you know, we got like the 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 groundwork laid. We have our project. It should be running. We haven't done anything yet. And we're launching. There we go. Of course, like, of course, it's not going to do anything yet. Um, but yeah, so we have we have that project. We have a repository up in GitHub so we can save our code. Now we can actually start doing some coding. That's what we're going to do in the next video.